Hi, today we're going to talk about the density of solids. Density is how much stuff there is in a given amount of space. Consider these two balls. A scientist would say density is how much matter there is in a given volume. I'm going to put these two golf balls on the balance. Obviously, the white one has got a greater mass than the blue one. How can that be? Well, there are more particles in the same amount of space. Density is how much matter there is in a given amount of volume. So how is density used? Well, you can use density to identify similar metals. For example, I have two cylinders here. They're exactly the same volume, exactly the same color. How do I know which one is steel and which one is aluminum? Well, I'm going to put them on the balance, like this. And obviously, this one has a greater ma uh, mass. So, we know that iron has a greater mass than aluminum. So to compare these two by their density, the iron has a greater density. What does that mean? Well, it means that there are more protons and more neutrons in the same amount of volume for iron than is the case for aluminum. So why would two metals have different densities? Consider iron and copper. They're both transition metals, and I'll put them on the pan. And you'll see that for the same amount of volume, copper has a greater mass. What does that mean? Well, it means that in the copper, there are more protons and more neutrons than in the iron. For every mole of iron atoms, there are 55 grams. For every mole of copper atoms, there are 63 grams. So copper has 8 more grams per mole than iron. Now we're going to talk about the density of liquids. Water is the most common liquid on Earth. It is also called the universal solvent because more things more items and substances and co compounds are soluble in water than any other liquid. Water is used as the standard for comparing densities of different solutions and liquids and, and they want to have 1.0 grams per milliliter. And how do we know it's 1.0 grams per milliliter? Well, let's show you. This one liter graduated cylinder, which is also 1,000 milliliters, has a mass of 200, no tens, and 8.5 grams. Each of these weights has a mass of 500 grams when put on the balance, so a total of one kilogram or 1,000 grams. So if we put these down on the ends here and add it to it, so the Graduated cylinder by itself has a mass of 208.5 grams. The, the mass of with the water included in it, that's a thousand milliliters or one liter, is 1,000 grams, 208.5. So exactly a thousand grams for a thousand milliliters. So the density of water is 1,000 grams per thousand milliliters, which is the same as 1.000 grams per milliliter. The density of water is one gram per milliliter, but when we add sugar to it, such as uh, in this lemonade, it becomes more dense than water, and we'll show you how that works. So if we're putting this can in, and it does sink to the bottom. Well, you might say there has some gases and the metal is there, but here we have an identical can, same amount of solution in it, but instead of sugar, it has an artificial sweetener. So same amount of gas, same amount of aluminum, same amount of water. The only difference is no sugar. And we put this one into the water. This one floats. So showing that the sugar solution is more dense than the sugarless solution. 
We're now going to show you that salt water is more dense than fresh water. Now our oceans are full of salt water at about 3%. So what happens when fresh water from the rivers enter the salt water or the fresh water from the Arctic that is melting ice flows into the salt water? So let's start with fresh water, which has a uh, density of one gram per milliliter. And we're just going to add, we're going to use the same amount, same water, about the same amount. And then for the fresh water, we'll turn that into yellow, so you can see that. And then we give that a little stir, so you can see that a little better. So fresh water has, has some dye in it. And then we also have some green water, which is, let's say salt water. Say, again, it's still fresh water with a little bit of green in it. Stir that up. And so we have just two waters, different colors. This water, we're going to add salt to it. We're going to make a saturated solution. And you know it's saturated when there's salt on the bottom. And you see a small amount of salt being accumulated right here on the bottom. Can you see that? Good. And so now we have saturated salt and we have fresh water. So we're going to put the salt solution on this side. And we're going to put the fresh water on this side. And it will overflow a little bit. We want them both topped off nicely. And then we're going to take the fresh water and because of the properties of pressure, and because I just tapped it a little bit, creating a little suction there, but because of pressures, I can turn it over. Water doesn't fall out. And then we can put one on top of the other, and then we can remove. And you'll see that the salt water down below is not mixing with the fresh water. Some of the air is kind of being moved up and down. That's why you see little air bubbles there but pretty much they are not mixing at all. Let's do the opposite. Let's take again salt water in one container. And we'll take fresh water in another container. And let's reverse it, and then we'll watch what happens. So I'm going to just pour it over a little bit, so it's that. And this one goes down below. You want to match it up. And you can take a little bit of on top, tap it, water doesn't fall out, put it right on top, and then when we take this one, salt water on top, fresh water down below, and then we pull this out, the salt water is being pulled down, mixing with the fresh water. And we can still see that the salt water is definitely not mixing with the fresh water on this side, and it will last for a fairly long time this way. Okay, we're now going to show you that cold water is more dense than hot water. Here I have cold water, and according to the thermometer, it is about oh, 2 degrees Celsius, which is about 34, 35 degrees Fahrenheit. And then our hot water here, so we just pulled this off of the uh, uh, hot water tap, it's a little bit of heat from a stove, but we have it now at about 48 degrees uh, Celsius, which is about 118 degrees Fahrenheit. So, just to make it a little more obvious, since we have hot water, let's make that red. And then we're going to make the cold water is blue. Again, put the same two drops in, so they're, they're the same. Stir that up just a little bit. Okay, you can see that that's blue. So let's go ahead and remove the thermometers. So I have hot water and cold water. Cold water is blue. So I can put them into each of their own containers and overflow just a little bit. Put this one in the red. Hot. Overflow that a little bit. And so now, which should be on top? Which should be on the bottom? Well, the less dense should be on top. So let's put the hot on top. I can turn this over and place it on top. And we can pull the screen out. And we can see that there is no mixing going on. Okay, let's reverse that. Let's get some hot water going in this container. And we'll get some blue water in this container. 
nice and cold. And let's go ahead and reverse those two. So in this case, the red's going to be, let's say we put the blue on top this time, so red. Let's take that. And just this can go right on top like that. And what's going to happen when we pull the sheet out? Mix or not mix? What do you think? And we see very quick mixing. The cold water is sinking because gravity is pulling it down because it's more dense. The hot water is rising, turning a little more. So we get a little more purple color instead of the red and blue. Therefore, cold water is more dense than hot water. Okay, we're going to go ahead and review the concepts behind density. Density is how much stuff is in a given space. A science would say, since density is how much matter is in a given volume. So density is equal to mass divided by volume. How can there be more mass in a given volume? Well, the atoms have to be either closer together and or each atom has to contain more protons and neutrons. Density is a property used to identify material in similar objects. Metric measures were established to make sure that a liter of water has a mass of one kilogram, so that at room temperature, water has a density of 1.0 grams per milliliter, or G per ml. Water is the most common liquid on Earth. Water is called the universal solvent, since it will accept more solutes in solution than any other liquid. Density of water changes when you add solutes such as salt or sugar, and then gravity pulls the more dense liquid down. For example, ocean water is 3% salt and will sink in fresh water. Water will also change density with temperature, and this is called thermo expansion. Colder water will sink below hotter water due to the force of gravity pulling the more dense liquid down. This video has been produced by Sten Mander and John Shrips at Casa Grande High School in Petaluma, California.